Welcome. Before we get started, be aware that all of the files for this project are in the description as a GitHub link. And I will try to get timestamps on here. I'm not exactly sure how, as this is my first actual tutorial video. That being said, please enjoy. All right, so welcome to basics or beginner, whatever I end up calling this playlist. Basically, this is just going to be a series of tutorials over very simple things within Godot. I'll be programming it simultaneously in C-sharp as well as Godot script, and then we'll be testing it in both so you can follow along in whatever language you like. If you start up the scene in the GitHub, you'll find this. It's very simple. It's just a couple boxes with static body 3D attached to them as well as a collision. Then we have a character body 3D, which is simple enough. And instead of using a normal box, I have a little box mesh that I put together in Blender, rather, just for aesthetic pleasing and added another collision shape 3d to it and a camera which is right here it's important to note that the forward axis in godot is the opposite of the blue arrow here you also have a world environment and a direction 3d so we are going to be focusing on it occurred to me during editing that the pop-up menus for godot do not show up in obs due to the way i am recording so Whenever there is a pop-up window, I will simply display text on screen like this that will tell you generally how to do what I am doing. That being said, there is one spot for input maps that I did actually go back and re-record just because it was that important. All right, enjoy the rest of the video on this, and we're going to go ahead and create the scripts, and let's base those off of the character body 3D. You can use the template right here for basic movement. We are not going to be because we are going to be programming it from scratch, and also we're going to be programming a slightly different version. Though, obviously, if you are doing it at home, you don't have to create both. You can create just one, whichever your desired language is. I personally prefer C Sharp, but that's because that's what I do for a living. Okay, let's go ahead and open them up, and uh, we'll get started on programming here. And we're going to start with putting in a couple variables that we'll be needing. We'll use the at export keyword on Godot, as well as the brackets export keyword on C Sharp. We're going to input the movement speed at just 30. We're using floats for these. So within Godot, now in Godot 4, you can use float as a hard type. And I just prefer that anyways for readability's sake. We're also going to add jump velocity, and we're going to set that to 100 because it just tends to work. Then we're also going to be adding a gravity speed, and we're going to set that to 4. Um, but these, obviously, we won't be using just yet. We're going to just be doing mouse rotation first off. Do one things one at a time is usually the best way to block out a project or a given task. So we also need to put in, obviously, mouse sensitivity, and we're going to put that at 0 0.5. You notice I carried over the F into Gitto from C Sharp. I, I get used to that with multiple languages at the same time. We're going to be using the event-based system for the mouse, whereas we'll use polling for the movement. So polling is when you check every frame, and then event is only when you check when it occurs. It's arguable that event is a higher performance option, but just for a user input, it really doesn't matter all that much. The reason why I use events for the mouse is because if you use polling, when you stop using a mouse input, say you lift up your mouse and you're no longer giving inputs, it will continue to read the event.relative.x as whatever the last one was. So you'll end up with a little bit of drift in your movements. And we'll go ahead and wrap that up by multiplying it times mouse sensitivity. All right, and we're back in Godot. So we can go ahead and make sure that we have our script on the player here. So let's just drag in. Uh, let's go with the Godot one first. We'll try the C sharp one afterwards. So in here, you can look around and we've got the ability to look around however we don't have the ability to move or jump or even fall really. so obviously this is very limited let's go ahead and try it on the c sharp all right yeah so 
we need to go ahead and get falling in. Although, let's start with movement. Let's start with movement and we'll worry about gravity and jumping afterwards. All right, and so to access our input maps, which we're going to need an input map properly set up for any movement we do, just go up here to project settings, and we're going to just clear all of this out because we don't actually need any, well, we will need these, but those are earlier attempts. So let's go ahead and add in move left, move right, move forward, and move back. And let's also go ahead and add in jump. And then we can go right here and you can hit the plus mark to add in whatever keys you need to. And it automatically just sets listening. So if you just press the key that you want to use, it'll go ahead and work. And I'm just gonna use WAS and D. You can use whatever you like. If you are using a joystick, it may be a little bit more difficult, but we won't go into that for today here you've got space is also jump key and then that's pretty much it if you want to do anything custom yourself you can and this name right here is the name that we use in the script and let's go ahead and work on movement so let's go back into our scripts all right and so now we're going to go ahead and implement in C sharp the public override void physics process. However, in Godot, it's going to be just called the function physics process. And we're going to need to create a new vector variable. So this will be for the input. So it'll be a private vector to movement input vector. And we're going to just initialize it to zero zero for the time being. I don't think it's required, but just for better safe than sorry. Next, we're going to be creating an input get vector polling method. So this will pull the vectors for, or the inputs for all of these and create a vector. There's a nice little helper class that's very similar to a composite in Unity. Once we have that done, we're going to need to multiply it times movement speed to get our actual movement speed. We don't have to implement delta here as the character body 3D handles that itself. However, we are going to set the velocity. Now the velocity has to be set in local space, not world space. In just a moment. So as we're setting velocity, we're going to use transform.basis and multiply it times the vector. That's going to convert it from world space to local space. So if you just use the normal input vector, if you press forward, it would go forward in world space. And what we want it to do is go forward in relative to the character that we are controlling. Following this, we'll go ahead and call the move and slide function. That will allow us to actually make the character body move properly. All right, and we're back in Godot. So let's go ahead and hit play. And we are moving very slowly on the C sharp one. Let's double check what's going on there. Ah, okay, we're not multiplying at times movement speed. Let's go back to Godot. Okay, and we are moving. Everything's just fine. If you move against the object, you move and slide exactly as the command would imply. Let's go ahead and switch over to Godot script and make sure that everything works just fine there. All right, and once again, moving and sliding and everything works just fine, exactly as intended. All right, so let's go ahead and get the ability to fall as well as the ability to jump. They kind of work hand in hand, so there's no reason not to do both at the same time. All right. All right, so first we're going to be making a current y velocity float variable. And the purpose of this is to let there be a continuation of movement. That way you can accelerate over time while falling and then of course arrest that and then jump up and have that nice smooth transition back to falling. So first we're going to make, and I did that slightly incorrectly in the Godot script. First we're going to make a if statement to check to see if it's on floor. And this is another useful function of character body 3D. 
And if it's not, we are going to make the current velocity equal to the maximum between the current velocity subtracting cur uh, gravity and negative 2000. That's basically just going to get the one that is the highest. In this case, negative 2000 is about terminal velocity for a human being, whereas current velocity minus gravity speed should usually be something underneath that. However, if it's on the floor, we're just going to zero out the current velocity. We're also going to do another check here to see if within the current, within the check to see if it's on floor, we're going to check to see if the input action is just pressed for jump at which point we're going to make the current velocity equal jump velocity. And I made a hiccup here. However, later on, I'll have to fix it to put current velocity into the Y of the movement vector. And you'll see that in just a second. All right, and we're back in Godot. So let's go ahead and see what how that worked. And we're using the Godot script at the moment. All right, we can move around. We cannot fall. What is going on there? Ah, so first it's misspelled. Let's go ahead and fix that. And we are not factoring it into the movement. I wonder if the C sharp one is also doing that. It is, yeah. So let's go ahead and factor that into the movement and get back into Godot. All right, now we're moving and we can jump and move around and that jump is a little bit extreme but for now it'll work just fine so obviously this is very simplistic but you could make a very simple game with something like this obviously we intend to um videos on ray casting and videos on spawning objects and deleting objects we'll see i want to do everything in both languages so it does take a little bit more effort to do the videos. I'm not sure how I'm going to piece these together in the editing and things. We'll see about all that, but if you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, stick around. You can do that through all the normal methods I'm sure you're aware of. All right, thank you for your time and you all have a wonderful day.